Tuesday, November 15th, a coalition of people from Indian People's Action and 350 Montana will be holding a peaceful informational rally in the park across the street from your office from 1 o'clock until 2 o'clock, to which the public is invited. And we invited them to, there's only two people in the office, and they were going to be off today, so I don't know. It's not about them. It's not about them. Okay. Uh, uh, but they're invited. The purpose of this rally is to inform people regarding our concerns for the safety of the Missouri River and the drinking water of millions of American citizens who live downstream from where Energy Transfer Partners Corporation plans to push its Dakota Access Pipeline under the river at the location where the Missouri comes the closest to the Standing Rock Indian Reservation, Standing Rock, Lakota. We, representatives of the above-mentioned local organizations, stand in agreement and solidarity with the people currently gathered and camped on the land just north of the Standing Rock Reservation. Osetti Sakoan, I didn't write that on there, but who call themselves the water protectors and join them in appealing to your department and to the President of the United States to stop energy transfer partners from violating federal laws and endangering the health of millions of Americans with their oil pipeline project little contextual note. 18 million people get their water from the Missouri River, the longest river in America, and many more irrigate America's agricultural crops from the Ogallala Aquifer that the river feeds. So it's not just for Standing Rock, but I will say first and foremost for the first people of this land, we are doing this. Energy Transfer Partners is violating federal law by not completing all required environmental impact surveys, not complying with the standing regulation that they not proceed with drilling under the river without first receiving an easement from the Army Corps of Engineers, and for being in violation of the Fort Laramie Treaty of 1851 for not consulting with the Standing Rock Sioux Nation and other tribal nations who were party to that treaty before building the pipeline through their unceded territories. And I probably should say a word about unceded territories, explain that a little. When they wrote these treaties and came into the homelands of people, to steal land, and I don't mince words on this. They, the initial treaties, all of them, you can see everywhere, are much larger, the, the, the reservations laid out are much larger than they are today. And so all of the territory that they continue to take after uh, signing the treaties and promising this will all be your uh, reservation reserved from the other land, the larger amount of land that we stole. That's where you get the word reservation, reserved from the bigger chunk of land that the United States stole from them. <clears throat> and so what, the United States broke all 370 plus of these treaties and one of the main ways it broke the treaties is by making the reservation smaller without a further consultation, without uh, any compensation usually. And, and you can look on these uh, time-lapse maps and see how these uh, lands got smaller and smaller. They were unceded territory because they were not a part of the ceded territory of the reservations. They were reserved. The United States just walked into them. And so that's where a lot of this uh, digging for the pipeline is going on. Up north of the reservation is unceded territory, never 
legally claimed by the U.S.? And what you call legally claimed, by whose laws? You go across an ocean into somebody else's homeland and say, by my laws, I'm going to take your land and your source of life, everything you have. Who has a right to do that? Can I go take a vacation in France and say, hey, I'm going to be as rowdy as I want to be here, break everybody's laws, because I'm under the laws of the United States. I bring them with me everywhere I go. Ridiculous, right? Yeah. Absolutely. But we don't call it ridiculous when we look at American history. Why is that? Are we brainwashed? Yeah. Well, there's a cure for that. <laughs> it's called correct information. <laughs> Truth. Yes, thank you. Let's use that word too. Please. Okay, rest of the letter, that's fairly short. There's so many good people here uh, that I'm going to introduce to you and they're going to talk. Okay. And, where was I? Okay. Other trip through unceded territories and also were intentionally, knowingly, digging through ancestral sacred ceremony, cemeteries. I wrote tribal sacred burial, an artifact carrying sites, but you gotta go into somebody's cemetery with your big gigantic tractors and start digging things up and expect to get away un, untouched by the law. And these people think they have the right to do that. Because, oh, it's just, it's just Indians. You know, we can do whatever we want. Hasn't history proven that? They can do whatever they want, they think. Time to change that one. We can make a big, a big correction on that one today. Starting right now. And, and so they intentionally did that, bringing their dogs with them. I didn't write all that in the letter. I just didn't write it. Uh, and refused to abide by or even consider the Army Corps of Engineers' two recent requests for a 30 day halt to the project, while alternative routes and other possibilities may be evaluated and considered. And then I say, We, the undersigned, me and John Woodwin, Therefore, in light of all the above facts, ask you and your office to join with us in appealing to President Barack Obama to hold energy transfer partners accountable for their violations of federal law and the use and use the forces under his command to stop the Dakota Access Pipeline project for at least the 30 days that your department has already requested. And we would hope that it would eventually become a permanent right due to the extreme risk. And I can go on and on about the risk, the thousands of pipeline spills every year, um, into the longest river and largest aquifer in the heartland of America. An additional urgency for the need to act soon on this potentially catastrophic project has recently arisen due to the election of uh, DT, the delirium yeah. tremens. No, <laughs> no, Donald Trump oh, as yeah. president elect, whom, as you probably know, does not believe in the actual science about the dangers of continued production and use of fossil fuels, and has therefore promised to apply no restraints to such projects. 